Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of our brand new podcast, Ponytails, with me, Chris Miller, <laughs> and of course the much more important uh, member of this crew, and that's Mr. David Seaman. David, how are you doing? Good, thanks. Good to have you back here again. We've got off to a big start this week with the Premier League. Did yes. you catch it? Did you get some games in? I, um, I watched a few games. Um, obviously I watched the Arsenal game while I was out in France, um, but yeah, it, it was... Frenetic, that one. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was, um, you know, one minute, like, what is going on? Yeah. You know, what's happening with the defence? And then all of a sudden, we end up winning the game somehow. But, um, yeah, it's good for the confidence, but there's a few problems there. But I know they've got injuries, mm. you know, so that's not the real defence that we normally have. Mm. Um, that's what I'm putting all my money on. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, have you made some predictions for the for the season? Did you did you have a thought about? Has anyone asked you that yet? Have you said yeah, have you I, said top four. Are you put <coughs> Arsenal up in the top four. Yeah, I, I would always put them in the top four because mm-hmm. that's at least where they should be. Yeah. Um, obviously, they didn't end up there last season, but um, you know, with the Europa League now, I don't know how much that's going to affect performances. Mm-hmm. I understand he's going to play a totally different team for that, but. Um, it would make yeah. sense, I think. Yeah, you yeah, know, because... focus on getting back in the Champions League. I mean, obviously, Manchester United did it through winning the Europa League. Yeah, um, but that's that, such but... a tough. That is a tough risk. I mean, you always want to win a cup. Though. Yeah, but that's a that's a great, that was a great achievement. You yeah. know, to actually win that is is fantastic. Um, but you know, with Arsenal for next for this season, yeah, top four, and then you know, I still think we're a couple of players short. Mm. You know, to to actually get over the line is to try and win the league. So. Yeah, anything in that top four would be great. Who are you impressed with um, just from seeing the games this weekend? Man United, yeah. massively. Um, you look at that team now and there's quality all in every position. You know, not just the quality, you know, technical quality, but even physical quality. They look massive. Yeah. You know, and, and <laughs> when you when you watch the game, you're like, why did Chelsea sell Matic? Yeah. Because he's just such a great player. You know, and the way that he runs... He runs that midfield, he allows players to push on, he just stands there and covers the back four. I was just really shocked that Chelsea let him go. Absolutely. I mean, I think I read something about Jose Mourinho coming out and saying that it was could be something to do with behind closed doors at Chelsea. There's yeah. something going on there which mm-hmm. uh, allowed that transfer to go through. I mean, it looks strange from everyone else. I remember the day when no one would sell to a rival. Yeah. You know, I'm talking about rival for the same position. Yeah. Um, in, anyone in that top six, you'd struggle to get a player off of. Um, whereas now, you know, these players are sort of transferring fairly freely. You know, Mata obviously went before Matic now. Yeah. Um, I mean, what are your thoughts on that in terms of the way that it's changed? And, and do you foresee that being as something just that we're going to get used to and seeing the big players transferring between clubs in the top of the Premier League? Yeah, I think we are going to get used to it because it is happening mm. more and more. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about where Sanchez might end up. Um, but like you said, with the, uh, the Matic and, and Mata, now they've got a problem with, with Costa. You know, we, we don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. Um, something's not right. You know, and then as we saw with their performance, it uh, it just all went wrong in that first half. You know, Cahill getting sent off, which I thought was a harsh red card. Right. Um, but then to go three down was really shocking. It takes something to do that. Yeah, you know, okay, they came back and then Fabregas got sent off and they, you know, they nearly nicked it at the end. But... Uh, it's strange what's going on there after what they what they achieved last season. Definitely, I mean, uh, it's my own opinion, but you know, when you throw the kind of money that some of these clubs do throw into the system, and, and they have these sudden brilliant seasons where they're mm. absolutely unstoppable, and then you know, I remember Chelsea finishing tenth or eleventh, was it you know a couple of seasons ago, and they've, yeah. and they've been fluctuating like that. And I don't know whether there's something toxic about having a of the kind of money coming in from chairmen um, who come in and take over clubs and and just throw money like that yeah. into it I, I don't know whether there's something that's changing the mentality so many egos so much the wages are so huge yeah it can be bits of that but I reckon they have one hell of a party after they've done it, it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. well there you go you get the medal you go you know as a Tottenham fan I sort of sit there going oh I've only you know oh it's great that we've got a wage structure yeah. and this and the other it's like yeah we haven't won no, anything yeah. in like eight years um, well, look, I mean, you know, there was a day when the, ch- the chairmen weren't quite the uh, the shakes and the oligarchs of, yeah. of old. I remember um, even when you were at QPR, there's, there's a time when a chairman actually asked to... <laughs> was he asked to play? He asked to play in the game. So me and Jim Smith were having uh, contract talks. When was this? Was this, nice? this was 80... Probably about 88 or 89. And um, we were chatting about my contract and... This was near towards the end of the season. Yeah. And I, 
obviously done quite well and this, that and the other and the chairman was sat in there and he was only a young guy, Richard Thompson his name is, I think. And um we we agreed we agreed everything and then and then at the end of it the, the chairman looked at Jim Smith as serious as anything and said, Jim, he says, just one other thing, he says, is there any chance that I could like get on for the last game of the season just for like five minutes as a sub? And he was deadly serious and like <laughs> me and Jim Smith looked at each other like we just could not believe it. <laughs> and it was like so hard not to laugh, but what? That's crazy. I mean, can you imagine that nowadays? I would have loved him to have gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unless he went in goal, then it would just be ridiculous. <laughs> no, I've got to keep right up in the air. <laughs> That's, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's funny that he would have put a man who's obviously done so well um, as to be in a position of owning a football yeah. club, that he could then sort of have that sort of lapse in common sense. <laughs> he could yeah. think he could play. It was just, yeah. It was, it was strange, but it was funny as well. These are the these are sort of the days maybe we miss a little bit now with all the glitz and the glam and the, you know, the ESPNs and the skies and everyone's yeah. all over the place. You know, maybe there is that, oh, you, you, you get nostalgic about those old days when a chairman might actually yeah. throw that out there. I think everybody's more on the guard now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's funny that, isn't it? Because um, it seems like players are on their guard, you know, agents are on their guard, managers, everyone, the club is sort of, has to create such a... A, a strict sort of bubble around all the players. Yeah. I mean, you know, the paparazzi, things like that, press and trying to get in and get the pictures or whatever yeah. it is. I mean, obviously someone who used to play with, you know, a lot, Paul Gascoigne. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously as a Tottenham fan, I've you know, got a tremendous Amazing player. respect for him. You, you ask anybody that's played with Gaza who their best player is, and I reckon 80, 90% of them all say Gaza. Yeah. Because he was so good. So, so good. You know, I only saw him obviously playing against him when he was at Tottenham mm -hmm. I actually played against him when he was at Newcastle when I was playing for Birmingham but to see him in training with England and see what he could do in there and then he used to do it on, in the games as well he was just phenomenal and what was it about him particularly because he has such a character as well yeah. such a character and it's almost like it just added to the to the whole enigmatic kind of quality yeah but he, he would do that he would he'd be the character on the pitch as well you know like some of his, his things that he used to try and get away with you know one of his, his favourite tricks was if a player was coming in, you know, and you're going to like try and hold them off with your elbow, he would just, gen not gently, but to put them totally off, he's, he used to say, hand in their face. Yeah. Just hand hand them off, but put your hand in their face. You know, like don't go and punch them or anything. Yeah, yeah. But just get And he says, because as soon as you do that, he said, they just go, then they yeah. go weak. <laughs> and it worked. And he, and he used to do it. I wonder whether they get away with that now, because you can't even go yeah. above their shoulders know, before yeah. you get sent off. I remember, I remember even one of his tricks that he tried with me. We, we were playing at White Hart Lane, yeah. Arsenal, so a big game. And I saw him in the tunnel, we were going out. And as we stepped onto the pitch, he actually tried to pant me. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I got my shorts tied. Was this at the days where this was a broadcast with the cameras in the tunnel, or is it just... Um, yeah, it would have been... Love to find a clip of that. Yeah, <laughs> I can't remember what year it was. Obviously, when Spring Gaza was there, but... Um, and you psyched yourself up. The team we yeah, but I was, like, I was a guy that would say hello and laugh sure. and joke with him in the tunnel and that lot. And then, it, and then you know, the referee goes, right, let's go out. You know, it's like time to get serious. And he actually tried to punch me as I ran out the pitch. And then we get out onto the pitch, so Tottenham go left, I think. We yeah. went right. And um, so we won the toss, so we like, right, change them round. You know, so we start to go down the other end, down to the Tottenham end. And then as I'm walking, as I'm like jogging down the middle of the pitch, you know, because, yeah, good luck there, good luck goalie. And as he went to shave my hand, he tried to trip me up. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the sort of things that he used to do all the time. That's so good. Yeah. I mean, you guys, you were friends outside of playing as well. You, you, you used to fish and... and we, yeah, we were, we were big friends and we well, still are, but it's just so hard to get hold of nowadays. But... Uh, yeah, we, you know, especially with England, you know, we'd be in the hotel for ages, yeah. getting bored or, well, I'd be getting bored, he'd be getting hyper. <laughs> and Terry Venables, the manager, would be like, David, take him fishing. <laughs> well, this is what I was going to say, because, like, you know, leading from the from what we were talking about, sort of insulating players and trying to keep them away from paps and all this kind of stuff, um, there's, a, there's a funny story about, like, when, when you guys actually went off fishing yeah. and you were, there was a paparazzi sort of encroaching, trying to get some pictures. Yeah, them. well, we used to go fishing regular mm. um, and, and, the, and the press knew that, but they seemed to leave us alone, you know, they didn't send photographers or anything like that, but... It was the day before the Spanish game, and um, Spanish, which Spanish is this the, the Euros? The, yeah, the Euros. Oh, right. Yeah, just before the quarter final, and we went fishing. There was me, Gazza, and Ian Walker, yeah. and we're in the middle of this lake on a boat, fly fishing and everything, and you know just enjoying it and relaxing. 
And then all of a sudden I noticed this guy on the bank and he'd got all the gear on and he was casting a good line, actually. And I says, oh, guys, look at him. I says, he looks like he knows all this stuff. Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden we, we carried on fishing. We looked up again and this guy had disappeared. And I was like, where's he gone? And as we all like looked over like that, he popped up from behind the reeds with this massive lens on his camera, taking all these pictures of us and everything. We're like, oh, God. Jess was like, right, quick, row in. Uh, I want to get the film out of the camera. The days when the ad films. Yeah, it was <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, so anyway, we start rowing in. And uh, I, so I got straight on the phone to the guy that owns the fish. I said, close the gate. I said, there's a reporter in here, a photographer. We've got some pictures. We want to have a word with him. Anyway, we were rowing in fast as we can. He gets to the shore. Gazza jumps out of the boat, runs over to the guy's car. Was, you know, he's, he's now locked himself in his car. And Gazza's like knocking on the window. And that was like, come on. You know, I want I want the film, and um, the car was waiting right at the gate because he obviously couldn't get out. Yeah. And um, the guy put his window down. He says, "No, no." I says, "You can't have the film or anything." You know, he says, "No, no, no." I was like, "Give me the film." You know, she's not getting out. Anyway, the guy then reaches in, grabs the guy's mobile phone. And so <laughs> he's like, "Right, I'll give you the phone, Mike, if you give me the film." And like, no, 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 no chance. <laughs> so then the guy now puts the window up and doesn't want to talk to us. So Gazza then starts letting his tyre down. <laughs> so as he starts letting his tyre down, the guy then panics, floors the car, oh, straight through the gate, like just smashes the gate out into a main road, off he went. Gazza's now got his phone. I said, Gazza, press redial. <laughs> press redial straight through to Piers Morgan. No way. Gazza was chatting with him on the phone. With direct Piers. line. Direct like he was, Gazza was, yeah, letting him know what he thought of him. Um, so then, and he's like, if you print them photos, I'm never going to speak to you again or all that stuff. So anyway, the next day, the day of the game, on the front of the Daily Mirror, Gazza's Armada, Able Seaman and Walker the Plank. Oh, the days of <laughs> good puns. That is absolutely brilliant. So that was, yeah. See, there you go. That, that, that's what I miss, actually. You know, just the, you know, the one cheeky photo and an amazing, just yeah. the pun. Basically. Yeah, good story. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it, it, it was funny, but it... It weren't quite so funny at the time, but yeah, great headline. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I mean, obviously you love your fishing. I know that, um, you know, sometimes it's maybe got the better of you. You, you suffered a bit of a weird injury, didn't you? Like, from, well, through fishing? Yeah, I've, I see, see our researchers, our little elves have been uh, working <laughs> away. And uh, we wanted to do a little quiz with you because right. we're going to look into it and we just want to know whether this is true, obviously. Right. I think maybe I know the answer now. But apparently <laughs> you had a couple of bizarre injuries yeah. in your career. In 2002... Uh, you sustained a shoulder injury yeah. caused by wrestling with a particularly big carp. <laughs> Does that sound right? Yeah, it must have been a world record. Yeah, <laughs> so it was a tiny level. <laughs> um, no, I'm not having that. I'm, I've never caught a big enough carp to injure my shoulder. Wow, so we'll put that down under the, um, the, the fiction the fiction <laughs> section. Um, actually, no, it's, here we go. So we're going to do a little quiz. Yeah. We're going to do a little quiz. And this is to looking at other goalkeepers who may have suffered. Right. Similarly, I think, we're hoping these ones are true, okay. but um, we're going to see whether you can guess the goalkeeper based on even the potentially fabricated stories but these probably yeah, appeared yeah. in the newspapers back in the day with some <laughs> brilliant pun probably next to it okay so we do a little quiz right see whether you do as well you did last week you did <laughs> nail it last week five right. out of five yeah. I think okay so number one who severed a tendon in his big toe after he dropped a large jar of salad cream on it I know this yeah Dave Besson Dave Besson that's correct <laughs> twice cap for England goalkeeper he missed the start of the 93-94 campaign because of it yeah um, you were in the England squad together, right? Yeah, we were. Well, Dave, Dave replaced me when I, I was in the England squad in 1990. I was mm. third choice. And then I brought my thumb in training. And Dave, Dave Besson replaced me. And that wasn't a fishing injury? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, what he did, he was trying to stop the, the jar hitting the tiles in his yes, kitchen. Yes, you put your foot out, didn't you? Yeah. And it, it, so it, the it, missus would have been pleased. Yeah, but it, no, but it hit, <laughs> it hit the tile. That's what oh. made it crack, you know, hit oh. the tile and his foot at the same time. So I, then it shattered and... Ah, okay. So, well, at least he tried. Yeah. Um, so number two. So you got one out of one. Really? Okay. <laughs> number two. This player cut his finger on a pen knife whilst fiddling with the waistband of his trousers. Oh. I think you're going to know this one. A clue... 43 caps for England, but zero convictions for possession of a knife. Uh, is this um, Chris Woods? It is Chris Woods, yes. it's correct. Chris <laughs> Woods played for... He played for Norwich, Norwich. Rangers, Glasgow Rangers, and came back with Chef Wednesday. Chef Wednesday, that's where I... Because I remembered him from Chef Wednesday days, I think. Yeah, um, I remember that game. And you guys were in the... Uh, 
you guys were in the in England setup as well. Yeah, well, he was, like say in nineteen ninety, it was Peter Shield and Chris Woodson mm-hmm. and me. Nice. Then Peter retired. Then Chris was had... there some sort of jinx going around with these weird injuries? <laughs> <for you Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> he cost me a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this. In- oh, actually, but this injury. See, this is a little fact which our guys have, have found out. This injury meant that you won your third England cap. So you could spend, um, you know. So you got, you actually got the ball rolling. On. Oh right. Well, we're, we're, I we're didn't realise that. that, that, that yeah. No, that was. Uh, yeah. So nice. thank you, Chris Woods, yeah, exactly. for not being able to, to like, <laughs> I don't know, tailor yeah. your pants properly. Yeah. Um, right, number three. Who knocked out his two front teeth whilst getting his golf clubs out of his bag? Oh, tricky. Actually, do you know where he got? He got them out of the boot of his car. And I'll give you a clue. He would call it the trunk of his car. Oh. Someone like Case, Casey, Casey Keller, yeah, yeah, exactly right. They Casey. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even. Well. I wouldn't have got that unless you said that really? about the train. Uh, <laughs> number four. Who twisted their ankle after falling on a sign telling him not to warm up in the goal mouth during the pre-game warm-up? So a bit of karma Ooh. right there. Right. I wouldn't know that. You nearly got it with your comment just then. When you said right. What Richard Wright? Yeah, Richard Wright. Did he? Yeah, former teammate of yours yeah. at Arsenal. Uh, it switch. Was it Ipswich or Everton? He he did, it? he did that at Everton. All right. Yeah, back in two thousand six. Yeah. So yeah, four, yeah, four <laughs> teammates. See, like I say, have yeah. you got the 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 cursing, <laughs> jinxing touch here with your fellow <laughs> keepers? Um, number five, who dislocated his jaw whilst shouting at his own defenders? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, you'd think it was like Shamaiko or something like that, based yeah. on the way that he used to go for them. It's oh, an old, yeah. it's a little bit, of a, it's a way ago. Is it? Yeah. Nineteen seventy-five. Oh. Manchester United versus Bob Wilson. Wilson. No, no. Alex Bob Stepney. Alex <laughs> Stepney. Yeah, I'd love that to have been Bob because we would never ever live that down. <laughs> um, number six, final one, and. So you, actually, first one you got wrong in two weeks. That's yeah. brilliant. I'm gonna say very well done. Um, <laughs> who was admitted to hospital with second degree burns after he agreed to let a friend iron his back? What? I'm, I'm now trying to think. <laughs> agreed. Of, oh yeah, yeah I'll let you iron. I'm now back. trying to think of what goalkeepers gazing him because that was yeah. one of the sort of things he did. Um, <laughs> no, I wouldn't know. He's got a bit of a link to Arsenal. Arsenal youth team goalkeeper who was perhaps more famous for punching a fan during a game in Belgium it was Graham oh, Stack. Stack yeah oh my god <laughs> you have to find out what the story was behind that I do yeah I, I, it doesn't even make sense yeah. iron his back I've got his number I'm that's like it's a thing it's not even a thing you don't uh, I really want to iron your back yeah next week next week I just don't even know what that is well, David, um, five out of six. Not bad. Not Congratulations. Bad. You're doing well. We're going to have to think of some sort of you know, reward, obviously, if you make it all the way without, uh, you know, yeah. with a good win percentage. Thanks again. Awesome fun Pleasure. talking to you. Um, everybody at home, we'll see you again next time. Bye. <laughs>